as 30 children. All it takes is one phone call. Please make that call now. In the time it takes to make your call, three children have gone irreversibly blind. Call HKI right now and say you want to help save a child's sight. You can make a difference. You can help prevent a child from losing their sight forever. Please call now. Take part in the miracle of HKI. Meet Charles J. Givens, author of the all-time best-selling financial book, Wealth Without Risk, and his latest bestseller, Financial Self-Defense, on Saturday evening at 6.30 p.m. here on WHO Television. You'll learn how to defend yourself and profit in today's economic recession, how to prepare yourself for the 1992 tax law changes, and why today's economy provides you with the greatest opportunity ever. So tune in Saturday evening at 6.30 p.m. here on Channel 13. Richest puzzles tonight at 6:30 only on TV 13. Okay, kids, why are drugs bad for you? Oh, oh yeah, me, I know, I know. Drugs make you mean to everybody like a monster. Then you get real sick and skinny like a skeleton, and you can even die. Yeah, mommy and dad will be so sad. They'll cry for a long time. That's right, kids. So don't buy them. On February 5th, I'll travel to Washington, D.C. as the first Iowa journalist to be invited to spend the day with Barbara Bush. Just how much input does she really have in our nation's future? I'll find out. We'll talk about the American family, her family, and life in the White House as America's first lady. I'll ask her about President Bush, his health, and the upcoming election. Kim Kerrigan talks to Barbara Bush Wednesday at 10 on News Center 13. Open the door to freedom. Open the door to dream. The people of Des Moines are rallying now to help open the doors of the new Forest Avenue Library. Your $35 brick will pay for tutoring and literacy programs. Open your heart. Buy a brick and open the doors. Open the door to opportunity. Give the world prize to see. Open the door. Brick order forms are available at these Des Moines locations. Ooh, it took a cold morning like this one for me to discover a really great hot cereal for my family. And who would have expected? It's grape nuts. I just pour grape nuts, add milk, and microwave for a minute. Mmm, it's got a warm, smooth, hearty taste that's so delicious we all love it. And grape nuts is fat-free. It's the perfect way to help keep us all going on a cold winter's morning. Hot, delicious grape nuts. Try it for yourself. Hot or cold, breakfast with post grape nut cereal helps keep you going strong all morning long. Marshall and Art are going to improve our club <laughs> crackers. But club's a tradition. <laughs> Some traditions were meant to be broken. Wow. Keebler Club Crackers. Now an easy to serve single. Uh oh. Rich. Smooth. The taste? Vanilla. Introducing French Vanilla Cafe. Rich coffee kissed with the flavor of vanilla. Your mouth will say, Mmm, merci. This is WHO, TV 13, Des Moines. Presidents Bush and Yeltsin meet and say their two countries are friends now. This is NBC Nightly News, reported by Garrett Utley. 
Good evening. In the old days in the Soviet Union, the evening network newscast began as often as not with some official government communique. And today, a communique issued by George Bush and Boris Yeltsin could become an historic document. It says in part, quote, Russia and the United States do not regard each other as potential adversaries anymore. From now on, the relationship will be characterized by friendship. That, after the first meeting between the President of the United States and the freely elected President of Russia. Here's Jim Mikulshevsky. They call each other Boris and George, Presidents Yeltsin and Bush, side by side at Camp David. Just like the old days with Mikhail Gorbachev. And just like Gorbachev, Yeltsin has a lot at stake. Today, Bush and Yeltsin said they'd hold two summits this year and signed a declaration that, in effect, buried the old superpower hatchet. It's based on a strong hope for true partnership. From now on, we do not consider ourselves to be potential enemies as it had been previously in our military doctrine. And just like Gorbachev, Yeltsin did most of the talking. Under increasing economic pressure at home, Yeltsin is fighting for survival, Russia's and his own. He offered a number of steps aimed at reducing tensions and increasing U.S. aid. Yeltsin proposed bigger nuclear weapons cuts and proposed a plan to share Star Wars anti-missile technology. Secretary of State Baker goes to Moscow in two weeks to discuss negotiations. Yeltsin made no direct plea for more financial aid today, but warned that without it, chaos and totalitarianism would follow. Because if the reform in Russia goes under, that means there will be a Cold War. It's gonna, Cold War is going to turn into a hot war. He told congressional leaders the next three months were critical to his political future and pleaded for an emergency airlift of food. And if we're going to respond, we need, need to do it quickly. Bush, still cautious, didn't make any commitments, but praised Yeltsin's commitment to democracy. He laid his life on the line on top of a tank uh, to, uh, to put, make that message loud and clear, and the whole world rejoiced in it when they saw his courage. Yeltsin may need more of that courage in the coming months, because officials here say that moral support is about all that President Bush can afford to give him. Jim McLeshevsky, NBC News, at the White House. And the fact is that one month precisely after Yeltsin's economic reform plan went into effect in Russia, there are very few signs of a free market developing there. In Moscow, Bob Abernathy shows what Yeltsin faces when he gets home. Yeltsin's problem is time. Time enough for his reforms to work before the Russian people lose patience and Yeltsin warns hardliners come back to power. Major reforms are underway. Yeltsin has lifted price controls on most products. Russian bureaucrats are slowly letting state enterprises become private. Emergency food and medical aid are arriving. Now, Yeltsin wants billions from all the West, not just the U.S., to back up the almost valueless ruble, fight inflation, and buy supplies from the rest of the world. Millions of Russians stored up food last fall, but these supplies are beginning to run out. Everybody knows nowadays that it should uh, be finished. Should be, it should be finished till springtime. The official cost of living is now twice the average wage, and an advisor to Yeltsin fears runaway inflation if that imbalance is not fixed. Every category of people, the miners, the doctors, everybody will come along, they'll get higher wages, and money will have to be printed to pay the wages, and off the situation will go. There's also a looming crisis in Russia's military-industrial complex. Yeltsin is cutting in half spending on defense production and that could cause massive unemployment. He's setting into motion a time bomb which might explode later. So far, Russians complain about high prices and insecurity, but nothing more. The question is how long people will wait for Yeltsin's reforms to improve their lives before they demand a return to authoritarian rule. Bob Abernethy, NBC News, Moscow. And so the question for us now is, if worse comes to worse, Yeltsin's reforms fail. If the hardliners, as he warns, do come back to power, is that a threat for us? Let's get some expert information in Washington from Representative David McCurdy of Oklahoma, Chairman of the House Select Committee on Intelligence. Sir, is it a threat if worse comes to worse? Well, there's possibly a threat. Uh, neither side is disarming yet. Uh, we've reduced the tension and taken the, 
taken away the hair trigger state. Uh, the Soviet Union does not have a conventional war fighting capability. They're not coherent. But there are still nuclear weapons on both sides, uh, thousands of them. And although they've made some unilateral reductions, taken uh, some of their weapon systems off alert, uh, it's a much more stable situation, but it could uh, revert if we're not careful. But it takes time to disarm, and that's why we need to work with them to accelerate the, the reduction in their nuclear arsenal as quickly as possible. So you make the dis distinction between conventional weapons, a threat which is no longer there, and the nuclear weapons which are a threat as long as they are there, correct? They are a threat, and they're actually now in four republics as opposed to, to one centrally controlled government. Now today we heard the two presidents, Yeltsin and Bush, saying that they, that we, are friends. Tell me, as head of the Intelligence uh, Committee in the House, are these friends still spying on each other, the KGB and the CIA? Well, th there will always be uh, probably some spying, but I think the, the, the key here is that there's going to be dramatic changes in the intent uh, behind our actions. Uh, we've actually, as a committee, been invited to, to meet with the Supreme Soviet of the Russian Federation to talk oversight of their intelligence community. They're dismantling it. They're, they're removing much of the uh, bad characteristics of the former KGB, and I think you'll see a much more open society throughout this transition. Uh, the question is whether or not those reforms actually do work and succeed. But for now, do you think when the presidents say that we are friends, real friendship, that is genuine, you accept that? Oh, I think they'd love to join us. I think they're desperate for help, and uh, I think we have a stake in uh, seeing those uh, reforms actually succeed. All right, Congressman McCurdy, head of the Select Intelligence Committee in the House, thanks for being with us from Washington today. And as we cover our world this day, we'll be following developments. The latest ones in the trial of Mike Tyson. A session was held this Saturday. Also, we'll listen to the candidates debating in New Hampshire. That primary is approaching. And on Focus this evening, how safe are you at work? As our technology advances, the safety of American workers is not keeping up. We'll show you why. Promise spread has no cholesterol and is lower in saturated fats and leading margarines. You make me feel so young. Promise. Get heart smart. It's gone. But it isn't. Introducing an incredible Vicks cough drop like you've never known before. It's gone, but it's still working. A cough drop so powerful, it keeps on working even after it's gone. It's still working. All new Extra Strength Vicks. Extra strength with twice the Vicks Vapor Medicine to relieve your cough and help your scratchy throat and stuffy nose feel better. So try new Extra Strength Vicks. Extra strong to work even after the drop is gone. It's still working. This was me with dull gray hair. I looked washed up. Then I found a whole new way to make my gray look great. In introducing a new kind of shampoo from the makers of Just For Men Hair Care called Great Looking Gray. Great Looking Gray does more than clean and condition. It gets rid of the dullness. Even yellow buildup brings out the real silver. What a difference it makes. New Great Looking Gray shampoo. And for stubborn yellow, new Great Looking Gray anti-yellow treatment. Done. Now's the time for Centrum Silver, because you're over 50 and you're out there swinging. Centrum Silver, a complete vitamin formula for your changing nutritional needs. Centrum Silver, it's a great time to be silver. The Haitian boat people are going home. A U.S. Coast Guard cutter was scheduled to sail this evening from the American naval base in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba carrying the first refugees to be sent back to Haiti. No choice being given them there. This comes after the U.S. Supreme Court overruled a lower court order which had blocked their return. About 9,000 Haitians are being held at Guantanamo Bay. They left Haiti after a military coup last fall. They want asylum in the United States, but immigration officials say most are fleeing poverty and not political repression. And now to politics in this country. As we approach the New Hampshire primary, three of the five Democratic candidates were there today after last night's debate in Washington. Here's correspondent Andrew Mitchell. Back in New Hampshire today, Bill Clinton was still getting more attention than his opponents. So in Friday night's debate, the others scrambled to get noticed. I balanced a budget in Nebraska not by saying no to enemies, that's fun, but by saying no to friends. 
Uh, I, I supported the pay raise because it, it gives us the opportunity to eliminate honorary and improve democracy. It doesn't take any courage to put money in your own pocket. Tom Harkin attacked Kerry's plan to pay for national health care by raising taxes. Be, I wish you'd be more forthright and tell the people exactly how much taxes are. I've been telling them how much taxes are. $246 billion. But we will be paying $240 billion, $246 more, billion. more in taxes. We will be paying $240 billion less in premiums. Harkin also went after Clinton's record in Arkansas. And at the bottom is Arkansas. Now, I think that's because of the same kind of economic policies that we're hearing espoused by Governor Clinton here tonight. Those guys didn't know what they were talking about. And I'll bet you anything Tom Harkin hadn't read the analysis. Like All of them went after George Bush. How can you be pro-choice and then go anti-choice because you're not trying to run with Ronald Reagan? George Bush has no core. There is no principle. George Bush is not willing to sabotage for his own benefit. Moments before the end, Jerry Brown ambushed Clinton. I mean, what is the biggest character issue out there right now? It's the stories on Bill Clinton, isn't it? Yep. And whether it's legitimate or not. And I think that, the, that that raises a question. It's not legitimate, and they ought to ease up on it. What's legitimate is our issues, our ideas, our agenda. That's what's legitimate in this campaign. Well, every time a woman makes a claim, she's always viewed as lying or a bimbo. Do you want to reply to that? I think I've said all I need to say about that. Okay. And I think the American people uh, got more... Uh, of me and my wife and our life together than they ever thought they'd get in this primary process. Clinton is still leading the pack in New Hampshire, according to the polls, with Sangus close behind. The others have a little over two weeks to try to turn that around. Andrea Mitchell, NBC News, Washington. And elsewhere, there was an unusual Saturday session today in the Indianapolis rape trial of boxer Mike Tyson. Our correspondent Gary Matsumoto has the latest there. When Mike Tyson arrived at court today, his well-wishers were absent, but the judge trying his case greeted him with a potentially favorable decision. She ruled that any other alleged sexual misconduct may not be admitted as evidence against him. Elsewhere in Indianapolis, Tyson has found support from the community. We have come tonight because a brother is in a fight for his life. At this church rally last night in his honor, Tyson told the congregation that he's confident of winning his case. I fight with God, and with God I can't lose, and I love you all. Thank you. But in the courtroom today, the prosecution introduced more potentially damaging testimony. Tyson's chauffeur, Virginia Foster, testified that his accuser, Desiree Washington, looked frantic, disoriented, and possibly in shock when she came out of Tyson's hotel the night of the alleged attack. The doctor who examined Washington testified her injuries were consistent with that of forced or hard sex. Another doctor called in as a medical expert by the prosecution says that in over 20,000 public examinations that he's performed, he's never seen injuries such as these in a case of consensual sex. Gary Matsumoto, NBC News, Indianapolis. And we'll be back with more news in just a moment. Now you can ask Angela Lansbury about Bufferin. Angela, you said on TV that Bufferin's effective pain relief. Is it really strong aspirin? I'll say it is. Extra strength Bufferin's the strongest dose of aspirin you can buy. 1,000 milligrams. Angela, how can Bufferin be so strong if it has buffers? That's a good question. I've learned the buffers don't weaken it. They just help prevent aspirin stomach upset. Bufferin's great pain relief. Shouldn't you discover the strength of Bufferin? Fettuccine. Tortellini. Linguini. I can't pass up any eeny. I'll pass on this grated topping. See, some grated toppings are only two-thirds cheese and one-third fats and fillers. But Kraft is 100% grated Parmesan. Kraft 100% grated Parmesan for 100% great taste. Ravioli, mustacholi, great on olis too. Everyone has a dream, a vision deep inside. When I decide to follow up on an investing idea, I need a broker who's ready when I am. We make it easier to follow your own. I can call Schwab at any hour, nights or weekends, get the information I need, even place an order to trade. Always there to give you just the help you need. Help yourself at Schwab today. What you are about to see will bring tears to your eyes. As close as you can get to real tears, because Murine with Natural Tears Formula is closer to your real tears than any other eye drop. Murine Natural Tears Formula. 
Campbell's heard your healthy requests. Low fat. Less salt. But lots of taste. Here's our answer. New Campbell's Healthy Request Ready to Serve Soups. All the great taste you want without some things you don't. New Campbell's Healthy Request. And healthy. Time now for our focus report, and Jeff Madrick is here to look at one risk in our society, safety, or the lack of it on the job. And Jeff, the official uh, statistics are saying about 3,000 people or more are killed on the job. But those are the official ones, Garrick, but estimates run as high as 10,000 deaths a year. Working in America can be dangerous. American Bumper and Manufacturing Company of Ionia, Michigan, had so many worker accidents that it was placed on the state's priority watch list every year since 1984. The company had been inspected 18 times and fined several times by Michigan OSHA, the state watchdog agency. After 21-year-old Ricky Dora and 25-year-old Stephen Eiler were crushed to death last September when this press suddenly started on its own, OSHA undertook a full-scale investigation. It found 216 safety violations. Joe Kinney of the National Safe Workplace Institute has just finished a study on job safety across the country. I mean, by any measure, uh, our national commitment to job health is a joke. Data clearly show that injuries are rising and the severity of injuries is increasing. The number of lost workdays due to injuries per 100 workers has risen from 54 in 1974 to 84 last year, according to government statistics. Shipbuilding workers have more than a 4 in 10 chance of getting injured in any given year. Meatpackers, nearly 3 in 10. Workers in auto stamping plants like American Bumper, a 2.5 chance in 10 of an injury. And repetitive motion injuries, now increasingly common among office workers, rose 26% last year. In the 80s, as corporations felt pressured to cut costs, critics claimed safety standards suffered. At the same time, in the Reagan administration's drive towards deregulation, OSHA, the federal agency, had its budget cut significantly, and the number of inspectors reduced. Gerard Scannell, the recently departed chief of OSHA, counters the criticism, claiming that injury data are not reliable and overstate the backsliding. We're making headway there. Now, I'm not satisfied, but we're making headway. OSHA today only has 1,200 inspectors. OSHA can only get to the workplaces of this country once every 79 years. They can only get to the hazardous worst places once every 13 years. That's a serious hazard right there. What are you doing? Federal and state OSHAs now urge consultations with business, like this one in Los Angeles. Federal OSHA especially has raised the level of fines it levies. Critics say it's just not enough, and there should be mandatory safety programs in every company. You need to do more right at the workplace itself, uh, put requirements for employers to have safety and health programs, and give the workers a role. The 26 workers who died in a fire in a North Carolina poultry plant last summer should serve as a reminder, Joe Kinney says, that safety is ultimately up to the workers. The real tragedy in North Carolina is, is that 100 people went to work at a plant knowing that many things were wrong. For any person getting up in the morning to go to work, to rely on the government to protect them, is foolhardy. Well, Congress is working on legislation that would require companies to let workers help oversee safety programs. The hope is they will feel free to speak up without fear of losing their jobs. Garrett. Okay, we have an insight into the problem in this country, but other industrialized countries, Japan, Western Europe, the safety record there is better, a lot better. Why? Right. The number, some people dispute the numbers, but it's pretty clear it is better. I think it is a question of attitude. They care. It's a matter of making the workplace a good place to work, a long tradition of that kind of thing. Japan, for example, nets its buildings, virtually every building that goes up, nets this way, nets this way. It's reduced accidents to a minimum. But attitude also costs dollars. It costs money, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. And I think that's partly because we were very profit-minded in the 80s. People cut back on all kinds of expenses, and it probably hit safety expenditures. But being safe pays. $83 billion is paid out in workman's compensation a year. You could save that if it were, you were safe. Money well spent. Jeff Madra, thanks for being with us. And we'll be back in just a moment with some final thoughts. 
flu epidemic declared. Entire U.S. affected. Fever, congestion, body aches. What will you do? Get serious medicine. Doctors recommend Theraflu. Theraflu is hot liquid medicine. Strong therapy for flu symptoms. Hot liquid therapy that works fast. What will you do when you get the flu? Doctors recommend Theraflu. Strong therapy for flu symptoms. So in my interview, they told me how Dow can take all this coal and turn it into clean burning gas. Wouldn't that cut down on acid rain? You got it. Sounds like one serious job, son. I just wish it wasn't so far away. Gonna miss you, Mike. Hey, take care of this for me. You can make a difference in what tomorrow brings. Son, show them what you got. Evidently, some people have money to burn. Why else would they pay an outrageous fee to carry a simple credit card? When they could carry the Discover card, the card that charges no annual fee, yet pays cash back on every charge, which means it puts money into your pocket instead of burning a hole in it. It pays to Discover. To get rid of her gray, my wife can spend 40 minutes but I discovered the five-minute hair coloring. The revolutionary discovery called Just For Men from the leader in men's hair coloring. Simply apply Just For Men and in five minutes, shampoo out. Gray is blended away. The look of my natural color is back in five minutes. That was me. And it won't fade or wash out. My hair takes forever, but you look great in just five minutes. The look of your natural color in just five minutes with Just For Men. For painful gas, which would you choose? Your antacid or Gas-X, the tablet made for gas? It's extra strength, 100% cymethicone, to fight gas faster. Faster than your antacid. Fight gas right with Gas-X. And finally this evening, sex and substance and the race for the White House. So far, this campaign is not really so much about Democrats and Republicans, liberals and conservatives. Look at it this way. In Bill Clinton, we have a referendum on a candidate's character. So far, it's not hurt his standing in New Hampshire, the first serious test for him. Maybe, just maybe, voters are deciding that we can finally leave a candidate's private life where it belongs, in private. And there is something else happening which may be significant. Have you noticed how candidates are using differing tactics to win votes? To put it broadly, some play on emotions and fears while others do not. Examples, conservative Republican Pat Buchanan and liberal Democrat Tom Harkin both aim more at the gut than at the head, beating the loud drum of protectionism and populism. Opposing them are candidates with a quieter tone and more moderate message. Among them, Democrats Tsongas and Clinton, and yes, even a Republican named George Bush. The days when you could win the presidency by proclaiming that it is morning in America are long gone. We are looking at the future now, not at rhetoric. We hear that voters are more interested in substance than ideology, in specifics rather than appeals to emotion, in solutions more than allegations about sex. Are they? Are we? That is what this election campaign is going to show. And that is our look at our world this day. Join us tomorrow morning for Sunday Today, followed by Meet the Press. I'm Garrett Utley. Good night for NBC News. Doctors impress women? You like being up to your neck in stool sandals. It's a new empty nest. Then an all-new nurses. <laughs> On NBC tonight. Next week, Richard Gere, Kim Basinger, and that man with a winning smile. David Letterman, next week <laughs> on Today. The Happy Network. <laughs> Coming up next from New Center 13. The Des Moines Diocese, or Catholic Diocese, mourns the death of Bishop Dingman. I'm Kathy Saltero. I'll have a live report. 
Angry Des Moines residents marched through the streets of Des Moines today protesting police brutality. And one month from today, over 100 Pirelli Armstrong workers will be out of a job. We'll tell you why and have their reaction. Ed says no doubt the Groundhog will forecast six more weeks of winter tomorrow. And Pat says the Hawkeyes get three in a row. All the highlights and all the news coming up next. Goodbye, Tide with Bleach. Here's Ultra. When I had the kids, I thought I'd bought my last white towel. Instead of a cup, one little scoop. I thought that little scoop was just too small. This washcloth is caked with mud, ground into the terry cloth. Take dirt gone down to the fiber. It's only this white with this other detergent, but with Ultra Tide with Bleach, it's whiter without chlorine bleach. I don't need liquid bleach anymore. This is my kind of white. Today's Tide with Bleach is Ultra. Your Dodge dealer announces a few lessons in life. There'll be turning points. You'll be thrown a lot of curves. And at times, you'll go your own way. That's why we built the Dodge full-size 250 4x4 and Dakota 4x4 pickups. Equipped with our new Magnum Series engines, they outpower and outtow Ford, Chevy, and import pickups. So for every mountain you'll have to climb, there's a Dodge truck to get you over it. And that's a valuable lesson because life can be rough. You're watching WHO TV 13 Des Moines, your 24-hour news source. This is News Center 13 at 6. Mourn the passing of this great, uh, gentle, and able leader for the diocese. Des Moines Catholic community mourning the loss of Bishop Maurice Dingman tonight. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Mercy Hospital officials say Bishop Dingman passed away early this morning. He had suffered from failing health for some time and family and friends had been keeping a bedside vigil. Doctors at Mercy Hospital say that Dingman died of pneumonia. He was 78 years old and had been the sixth bishop of the Des Moines Diocese. He took that position back in 1968. Dingman suffered a stroke in 1986 and retired from that position in 1987. Catholic officials say Bishop Dingman left behind a legacy untouched by others. His work for the needy stood out in his career. New Center 13's Kathy Saltero joins us live from St. Ambrose Cathedral in downtown Des Moines with a look back at some of the highlights from the bishop's life. Kathy? Well, Scott, as people attended Mass here this evening at St. Ambrose Church, they, the word spread quickly about Bishop Dingman's death. They recalled one of the main events in his career, and that was the visit of the Pope himself. That undoubtedly was a highlight for Bishop Dingman as well. It was a very proud day for Bishop Dingman when he escorted Pope John Paul II on his trip to Iowa in 1979. Probably one of the biggest moments in his life. For him, for him it was the highlight of his priesthood, of uh, his term as bishop, and of his life. Uh, he never forgot that and, of course, was just very uh, happy that that came about while he was here as bishop. Lawrence Brahaney was the director of the Catholic Social Services under Bishop Dingman. He says the bishop was very much interested in social justice and peace issues. And uh, the bishop was simply a very good and gentle man who was liked by all who came in contact with him. He was gentle. He was very bright. He was kind. He was very forgiving. Uh, when you work with a staff of people in a whole diocese, there are many things that perhaps you wish would be done differently, but he was always able to to see the human side of people and to um, forgive and to help them to grow and develop. Bishop Dingman was the longest serving bishop in the diocese until a stroke forced his retirement six years ago. Bishop Dingman was 78 years old. Scott, there are many events leading up to the funeral services that will be held on Wednesday tomorrow, starting tomorrow with a memorial mass here at St. Ambrose at 6 o'clock. Now again, funeral services will be held uh, here tomorrow or Wednesday at 11 a.m. at St. Ambrose and the public is invited to attend. It's a very sad day for the Catholic Diocese but then again we talked to many people here at church today and they were saying that they were happy that his suffering was over. You know that he suffered a stroke six years ago and they said ever since then his life was not the same. So there were a, a few services even here tonight a candlelight service in in memory of him. So obviously people uh, mourning the death but happy that his suffering is over. It is a sad day. Thank you very much, Kathy. Teresa? They call themselves mothers and wives against police brutality. Today, they took to the streets of downtown Des Moines to protest. As News Center 13's Mary Mills tells us, this grassroots group wants action. No excuse! Get out of the cops! 
Shouting slogans and waving signs, some 75 demonstrators marched through downtown Des Moines to protest alleged police brutality. The police brutality in this town is very high, and I think it should be stopped. The march was prompted by the Larry Milton beating. It was further fueled by the city council's refusal to set up a citizen review board to investigate. You do the crime, you got to do the time. I, I'd like to see precedent set with the uh, three officers in this particular incident. It's unfortunate, but I think they need to go to jail and should be charged with attempted murder. The demonstrators say there's much more to this march than just the Larry Milton case. The message is that not only my son, but other people's sons have been beaten by the police officers here in Des Moines. Some were from out of state. This woman says she was beaten by San Francisco police. As a result of my case uh, and the lawsuit that we filed, uh, they had to change all of the police procedures in terms of crowd control. The march ended with a rally at Nolan Plaza. Did they have to beat this brother Milton? No! Organizers vowed to keep up the fight, their efforts boosted by the Mark Curtis ruling. Yesterday, a judge awarded the convicted rapist $11,000 for a police beating in 1988. This is one of the first times that the police department has been in a court of law found guilty in this city of brutalizing someone. Demonstrators say they're confident it won't be the last time. In Des Moines, Mary Mills, New Center 13. And the Des Moines City Council will be holding public hearings on police conduct and policies. Council changed its mind in support of the hearings last Monday. The first public hearing will be held at Bolton Elementary School at 710 College Avenue, 7.30 p.m. Tuesday, February the 11th. There will be three other public hearings, so there is one in each of the city's four wards. Some hard times ahead for more than 100 Des Moines rubber workers. About 140 workers at Pirelli Armstrong will get pink slips in early March. That's about one-tenth of the plant's workforce. Workers have been told about the layoffs and say they're really not surprised, but they feel for those with families to support in an already tough economy. It is. I mean, it happens. It's, the economy is that way over the United States. We're not the only one being laying off. What the company wants, basically, what they feel is important. There's nothing that the guy on the line can do about it. Company management blames the layoffs on reduced demand for farm imp implement tires. Law enforcement officials still waiting for test results on a batch of Nuprin painkillers that made three members of an Altoona family sick. Investigators say they're waiting for those results before determining whether it may be a case of tampering. 15-year-old Sarah Davis, her brother Brian, and mother Helen all became ill after taking Nuprin pills purchased at an Eastside drugstore. All three were hospitalized. Some central Iowa stores have removed the painkillers from their shelves, but so far, an official recall has not been made. This is the official lot number in case you're concerned about Nuprin you may have in your home. It is NUOJ7B with an expiration date of 795. An early morning fire did extensive damage to two businesses south of Court Avenue. Crews were still on the scene late this morning pumping water from the business complex at 319 Southwest 5th Street. Fire investigators say the blaze appeared to have started in the ceiling of the print shop and spread to a nearby woodworking company. The blaze triggered a sprinkler system which helped firefighters contain the fire. Damage could run near $40,000. The exact cause is still under investigation. We had just a gorgeous day today, and tomorrow looks to be even better. Let's go to Ed Wilson right now for our first check in the forecast, Ed. I'll tell you what, beautiful conditions outdoors, and they're holding on this evening. Right now, this is what we have across the state. 44 degrees in Des Moines. That's down about 5 degrees from our daytime high. Council Bluffs had 57 for a high today. They're at 47 right now. Temperatures uh, over to the north and east of us, just a little bit cooler as they have been all day, but uh, beautiful weather coming up for tomorrow. Temperatures right back up into... Yes, very close to the 60-degree range. I'll give you the forecast and all our details on our above-normal weather when we come back with the weather segment, Scott. All right, thanks, Ed. For about 1,200 bike riders, today's weather was a little too nice. The 15th annual Burr Bike Ride was held today. Burr stands for Bike Ride to Rippy. Hundreds of cyclists gathered in Perry this morning for the 23-mile trek to Rippy. In the past, the bikers have had to battle ice-licking roads, blowing winds, and sub-freezing temperatures. Well, the conditions weren't traditional today. There were very few complaints. We'll have more on Burr coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. A Des Moines family is desperate to get some videotapes back. The tapes were stolen, and they're appealing to the thieves for help. We'll have that story in just a minute. And spring-like weather made long johns unnecessary for the annual red flannel run at Winterfest today. Stay with us. More news after this. What could be better than that warm after-the-holidays feeling? How about pearls? 30 to 60% off sale. Every frame in the store is on sale. Every lady's frame.
frame. Every men's frame. Every frame is 30 to 60 percent off regular price. You don't even need a coupon. There's a far, far bigger sale than Pearl has ever had before. But hurry! The sale will soon be history. There's been slow dancing, there's been slow hands. After all these years, don't ever change. Don't ever change. Cause you know the best things in life never change. I like it slow. This family works moment is brought to you by Heinz. I'm not coming home again. You don't really care how I feel. Bill, Bobby's run off again. You've got to talk to him. Talk to him? Mary, that kid doesn't listen to a thing I say. Mr. Cody, it's Bobby's coach. I think he's gonna get in touch. Hello? Is anybody there? Is anybody listening? Can somebody Take the time to really up? listen. In a family, everyone has something important to say. It's why the family works. Dixie's Furniture and Gifts wants to move everything out to make room for new stuff. All gifts, jewelry, and toys reduce 25%. Plus, wood bunk bed sets with mattress starting at $129. This sofa love seat and chair set has been reduced to $399. And if all you need is the sofa, they start at $188. Dixie's has coffee and end table starting at $19 each. Lamps from $15.99. Plus, reduced prices on dinettes, dressers, and chests. For all your furniture needs, Dixie's Furniture and Gifts, one block east of East 14th in Euclid. A Des Moines family is asking for your help tonight. Their home was burglarized earlier this week, and the thieves took some irreplaceable videotapes. Rhonda Dale and Creighton Whitehill say the videotapes contain events of their daughter's life that can't be repeated. Her first steps, her first birthday and Christmas. Rhonda says the thieves took a camcorder and a case carrying 8 to 10 videotapes. In a desperate attempt to get the tapes back, they posted notes on their front and back doors in case the burglars return. The notes are asking for the tapes and nothing more. If anyone comes across the tape, the family asks that you call them, 265-8987, or at least leave the tapes at their home at 1532 East 9th Street, Apartment 1. No questions will be asked. The Democratic presidential candidates may not show up for the Iowa caucus, but George Bush will have a challenger here. Republican Pat Buchanan opened an official Iowa campaign office on Merle Hay Road today, right across the street from the mall. And while other candidates have shied away because of Tom Harkin, Buchanan is trying to drum up votes for the caucus on February 10th. There is also word that Buchanan may make a visit to Iowa sometime next week. They call it the Red Flannel Run because it's held in the dead of Iowa's winter. But these runners had no reason to don the long undies today. Nope, not with temperatures climbing into the 50s. But if you seem to mind, it's much better than sub-zero temperatures of years past, right? The five-mile run was another part of the Winterfest activities. And while most of us are enjoying the unseasonably warm February weather, some Iowa bird watchers would also like to see it a little colder. You see, those who head out in search of a glimpse of the bald eagle normally have better luck when the weather turns nasty. But you shouldn't have too much of a problem spotting an eagle in Iowa this winter, as Joe Wilkinson shows us in this week's Iowa Outdoors Report. Whether you join thousands of participants at any of the bald eagle appreciation days, or just like to head out by yourself for an uninterrupted view, it's getting easier to find bald eagles. Cold weather concentrates them around open water as they feed on fish, and with its Mississippi River and inland streams and reservoirs, Iowa has become a prime wintering ground. Overwinning populations in Iowa are, are growing each year. The birds are attracted to the lock and dam system uh, as the fish are stunned going through the uh, lock and dam. They uh, are easy, easy pickings for these bald eagles to uh, feed upon. Traditional areas, which once held dozens, now hold up to several hundred bald eagles. On a stretch of the lower Des Moines River this winter, we're finding 20 eagles used to be common. Biologists tallied 326. And as the numbers grow, a new challenge arises, ensuring sufficient roosting habitat for the wintering eagles. We're seeing the responsibility to provide these winter roost sites that along the, uh, the inland river system, particularly the Des Moines, that uh, is quite essential for them to have a, a secure winter uh, roost site. Otherwise, the majestic birds expend too much energy in the bitter cold. Wildlife officials feel Iowa can support the growing overwinter population if the required lowland timber and minimal human involvement can be preserved. This is Joe Wilkinson for News Center 13. 
Well, if you thought today was great, just wait until tomorrow. The groundhog will definitely be seeing his shadow at least around here with some sunshine and possibly some record high temps. Ed's putting the finishing touches on the Groundhog Day forecast. It'll be a dandy and he'll have it for us next. The greatest events of our lives are celebrated once each year. Birthdays, anniversaries, and holidays. We share with our family, friends, and neighbors. The annual fundraising campaign for Catholic Charities is a time for sharing as well. Throughout each year, your cash gifts help pay for counseling, crisis pregnancy services, support groups, and family life education. Catholic Charities serves anyone in need. Last year, we served over 25,000 people, and the need is growing. Please donate through your church envelope or send your contribution to Catholic Charities. Open the door to freedom. Open the door to dream. The people of Des Moines are rallying now to help open the doors of the new Forest Avenue Library. Your $35 brick will pay for tutoring and literacy programs. Open your heart, buy a brick, and open the doors. Open the door to opportunity. Give the world prize to see. Open the door. Brick order forms are available at these open Des Moines locations. Open the door. There are two ways of filing your income tax return. The old way or rapid refund from H&R Block. The old way involves patience. With Rapid Refund, we file your federal return electronically, and you may qualify to get a loan against your anticipated refund in a matter of days. Even the fees can be withheld. Available whether H&R Block prepares your return or not. So it's your choice, the old way, or Rapid Refund from H&R Block to get your money fast. Dozens of dart enthusiasts going for the bullseye today, competing in the, in the electronic dart tournament at Winterset. Sides taking on each other's, I guess it's not Winterset. Winterfest. Winterfest, taking on each other's competitors. We're also encouraged to take on the champ, who's a St. Paul man who has a personal record of 51 consecutive bullseyes. Lots of stuff going on at Winterfest. I don't know if I could hit the dartboard 51 times in a row, let alone hit the uh, I could. I'd like to hit the forecast right 51 times in a row. <laughs> I'll tell you, this is a dandy. Jerry's down in San Diego, and I'll tell you, the weather down there can't be a whole lot better than it was here today. I'll tell you what, it's not. Uh, they've had some rain down there, and it looks like the shower activity will continue tomorrow. Sorry, Jerry. <laughs> But uh, with that, he'll come back to uh, much cooler temperatures than when he left. Give you all the details for tomorrow, though. Wow, what a day. Okay. Temperature outlook for the next 30 days as we head into the heart month of February, above normal. Throughout much of Iowa, we're right on that line there in Des Moines. And normal temperatures uh, for the rest of the state below normal down to the south of us. Now for precipitation, now this is, of course, just a best guess. Below normal uh, precipitation for all of the upper Midwest, even back into the Great Lakes where usually they pick up a lot of snow with uh, the lake effect snows. Above normal precipitation, though, for the flooded areas of Texas back into the Gulf and for the very dry area of the uh, desert southwest. That's good news for them. Lots of flooding expected, though, in the next 30 days for Texas. Not good news for those folks. Let's take a look at what we have outdoors right now as we step outside with some folks fishing off the bridge near the Capitol. Uh, temperature of 44 degrees, clear skies, a dew point at 30, a relative humidity of 58%, southeast of the winds at 7 miles per hour. Barometric pressure is back on the rise right now, 30.07 inches. And with that, uh, we are going to head into a dandy day tomorrow. Just beautiful out there. And partly uh, to, I guess, blame for those warm temperatures will be the uh, warm overnight low, if you don't like the warm temps. 33 here in Des Moines. 20s to the north of us throughout much of the uh, upper United States. And that is way above normal uh, for this time of the year. In fact, single digits are normal for northern Minnesota. They are way above, and of course, we should have a low right around 12 degrees for overnight lows. So uh, again, we're tipping the scales towards spring as we head through these winter months. Now, for the radar summary across the United States, very little going on. A little bit of shower activity again over southern Texas.